sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com. Thousands of voters turned out on the first day of early voting in Victoria. We'll tell you how long some voters waited in line for the polls. And new details on the stay of execution for a Texas man will tell you why he did not appear at his appeal Monday. And just ahead, how the Biden administration's safe plan is helping relieve student debt for borrowers. And we're tracking a little bit of light patchy fog out there in the crossroads. We're going to take a look at that here in just a second. But for us, we got lots more summertime weather in the middle of fall. We'll take a look at that and also a couple of tropical systems and another one possible in the future and the weather coming up. Some of the best football in the state of Texas being played right here in the crossroads. Seven teams in the top 10 that list in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning, Crossroads, and a happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. Yes, good morning, Crossroads. We're almost halfway through the week, just one more day. That's right, and I have a fun piece of Texas history for oh, us. do you? So, on this day in 1836, a few years after Victoria County was founded, okay. Sam Houston was inaugurated as the first president of the Republic of Texas. Wow. On this day? Yeah, on this day. Wow. <laughs> That's some, that is definitely some Texas history right there. Nice job, Carl. That's right, Parker. Well, how's it looking out there for us? Well, for your Texas history kind of day, Texas is definitely going to be doing its thing and it's just going to get hot again. Well, it's going to be like that all week long and all the way to next week, folks. So get ready for that. Maybe a cool front coming our way late, late next week into next weekend, but we're not going to have details on that until next week. But right now, if you're tuning in with us this morning, obviously it's not hot out there yet. It's actually a little bit nice out there and definitely a little bit humid. 61 degrees in here in Victoria, dew point one degree off, bringing humidity to 97%. That is definitely enough to see a little bit of fog in this computer here. It says four mile visibility, but looking at this one, this one also says four miles, but some areas are seeing a little bit less than that. They got a half, a mile and a half over their base AC. So just make sure to be careful on the roads. We're not expecting thick fog out there this morning, but if you do see any of that in the lower kind of elevation, just make sure to be careful on the road. That fog should be clearing between 8 to 9 as the sun starts coming up in the sky today. But look at your winds right now. Why we're expecting a little bit of fog is because we've been experiencing the lots of southeasterly Gulf winds over the last several days. That's been, and that's been bringing our lows back into the 60s, and that's been keeping our highs in the upper 80s and the low 90s all week long. So if you're seeing your kids at the door this morning, pack them for a cool morning, maybe a light jacket. But then they're going to definitely take that jacket off in the afternoon as we get to the upper 80s. And we'll look at that coming up next. Carolina. A weekend shooting in Mission Valley is under investigation by the Victoria County Sheriff's Office. Deputies were called to the 9800 block of Lower Mission Valley Road on Saturday concerning a shooting. A man identified as 20-year-old Nathaniel Escobedo of Victoria was taken from that location to a local hospital in a private vehicle. He did not survive his injuries. If you have any information about this murder, you're asked to call Victoria Crime Stoppers at 361-572-4200. You can also submit a tip by using the P3 Tips app on your Android or Apple device or online at CrimestoppersVictoria.com. Early voting started Monday. The Dr. Petty Dotson Public Health Center saw hundreds of residents lining up through its halls. Almost 6.5% of registered Victoria County voters have already cast their votes. Over 2,000 people showed up to vote in person and over 1,600 more voted by mail. And here's a closer look at the number of votes cast yesterday. 2,090 people voted in person Monday compared to 1,720 in-person votes on the first day of early voting in 2020. 98 mail-in votes were received Monday with 1,631 mail-in votes received so far. Election administrators say that wait times throughout the day were near an hour. Lead administrator Margetta Hill described just how much work goes into preparing a polling location for the vote. We work very hard and we work long hours during this time. So the next two weeks we get a little sleep. <laughs> it's just a lot. Yeah. yeah. I tell everybody it's like planning a party for 58,000 people and you don't know who's going to show up. Early voting continues through November 1st with polling hours lasting from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. each day. U.S. Senator Ted Cruz's bus tour is making a stop this morning in Victoria. Senator Cruz will be at Lavaca Barbecue today from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Senator Cruz is using the tour to reach voters across the state ahead of Election Day. 
A Port Lavaca man found guilty of murder was denied a new trial. The Port Lavaca Wave reports Blake Downs' motion for a new trial was denied by District Court Judge Stephen Williams. Downs was found guilty of murder in the death of Cohen Berm in August. Downs was sentenced to 30 years in state prison. The motion for a new trial cited new evidence that would have been favorable to Downs that had been found since the trial. The man killed in a single vehicle crash in Southern Victoria is identified as 63-year-old Leroy Sullivan. The vehicle crashed at 1 p.m. Friday afternoon in the 2700 block of Odom Street. Victoria police say Sullivan was driving a pickup truck southbound on Ben Wilson. Then the truck veered off the road for an unknown reason, hitting a tree and a house. Sullivan was pronounced dead at the scene. No one else was hurt. We're getting more video from the scene of a tragic helicopter crash in Houston from last night. Police say four people, including a child, were killed when a helicopter hit a radio tower, causing it to crash and burn into the flames. The fire caused by the crash burned close to 200 yards of grass. The helicopter had taken off from Ellington Field and was headed to an unknown destination when it crashed. Authorities are asking for anyone in the area who may come across pieces of the wrecked helicopter to leave it alone and contact police. A new twist in a death penalty showdown. A man convicted in the shaken baby death of his daughter is facing a new hurdle after winning a rare stay of execution last week. Robertson, the first person facing execution in a case of shaken baby syndrome, was supposed to appear yesterday before a committee of state lawmakers to make a rare appeal for clemency, but that did not happen. I'm very disappointed to say I don't believe that will happen today. The attorney general said Robertson could testify only via video, not in person at the Capitol. But lawmakers decided against a virtual appearance, citing his autism and communication challenges. Instead, his high-profile supporters, including Dr. Phil, were there fighting to save Robertson's life. I am 100 percent convinced that we're facing a miscarriage of justice here. We start executing people in Texas absent due process, absent fair trial. We are going down a really dangerous road. Put the jury in the box and let's have a fair trial. That's all we're asking for. Last Thursday, Robertson's execution for the 2002 death of his two-year-old daughter, Nikki, was halted at the last moment by the Texas Supreme Court amid new evidence in the case. His lawyers argue shaken baby syndrome has now been debunked, and they claim there's evidence Nikki actually died from pneumonia complications. Texas has on its book a law that allows that once science has shown that something is now junk or it is no longer applicable, that anyone convicted under that old science can use the law as a vehicle to have their trial either retried or have the issues re-examined. Once an execution is postponed in Texas, it cannot be rescheduled for 90 days. In the meantime, it's up to that committee of lawmakers to determine what happens next. Now until then, there will be a court battle about whether or not he appears for this, this testimony for the House in person. Also, there will be a debate as to whether or not this is something that should receive a new trial. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Federal student loan payments for some 8 million borrowers will remain on pause for six months or longer. The borrowers who are excused from their monthly payments are those enrolled in the Biden administration's new SAVE plan. It's the president's latest attempt to forgive student debt as the administration continues to defend the plan against legal battles waged by Republicans. The Education Department has already forgiven $5.5 billion in student debt for 414,000 borrowers through the SAVE plan. And that leads us to your viewer poll. You can scan the QR code right there on your screen to take part. We want to know, do you agree with President Biden's student debt forgiveness plans? Okay, let's take a look. Just 20% of you say yes and 80% of you say no. Thank you for taking part in our viewer poll. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part. All right, be sure to follow us on our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click that notification bell. Let's get a look at our clock up here. It's 639 on our Tuesday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. We learn what challenges and questions a community is facing as it considers becoming a city. I'm ABC's Perry Russell in Washington. Two weeks to go until Election Day and more than 15 million people have already voted. That story coming up.
And also coming up next after the break in the full forecast, that's going to be another summer like day here in the middle of fall. I'll tell you how warm I think it's going to be here in the crossroads. But coming up later on Sunrise, we're going to continue looking at the two tropical systems that are out there and another one that might be possible in the future. Well, good morning, Crossroads. You're looking live in Quero this morning. Still a little bit cool out there for some of us, but definitely quite, quite humid out there. We're talking 64 degrees in Quero right now, but you do put one degree off, bringing humidity to a high 97%. So just make sure to be careful on the roads this morning with the calm wind. You might see a little bit of fog out there, but we're not expecting super thick fog out there this morning because it's not super warm and uh, not so, like actually not the other way around. It's not super cool yet. Usually when it's in the fall, like the late fall in the winter time, when it's really close to that dew point, it's going to be a little bit more humid and more foggy out there, but not expecting too much out there today. In fact, we'll get your future clouds and radar. If there is any fog, it should clear between 8 to 9 with the sun coming up today. But the sun's not going to exactly come straight up in the sky. It's not going to be super sunny today. It's going to be pretty partly cloudy all the way until the mid-afternoon, I'm thinking today. Maybe at around 4 or 5 p.m., we're going to start seeing the cloud cover start slowly decreasing back to mostly clear skies for the overnight tonight. And the mostly clear skies tonight could bring our lows back into the low 60s again, just like we're seeing right now. But our temperatures today behind the partly cloudy skies, that sun's going to be peaking. Warm our highs up to the upper age today. At noontime, it's going to be about 84. But in the afternoon, I'm thinking high of about 89 here in Victoria. Everybody else can see about the same thing in the upper 80s unless you're along the midi coast now we're going to see highs in the mid 80s 84 85 today i've got forecast 85 and port labaca for this afternoon but in the background we do just still have a little bit of pollen to deal with we're talking moderate grass tree and ragweed and uv index is going to be high so make sure to be careful with that unless y'all decide if you want to take an allergy pill or not but if y'all going down to the beach today it's not going to be too bad of a day a little bit of part cut skies like i said your water just slightly you know, pretty smooth today one foot of western water still pretty warm in the upper 70s and the low 80s but coming away for the rest of this week we've got lots more warm air temperatures but coming up next, we're going to take a look at what's trying to form out there in the tropics. Week 9 of the high school football season is here. The crossroads well represented on Dave Campbell State rankings. How about four teams that will all play each other this week? We have El Campo coming in at number 5, Bay City at number 10. They take on each other this week in what could decide the district. It's also the second longest rivalry in Texas, the longest being Cuero and Yoakum, and of course, Edna and Goliad go at it in what could also decide that district. And we have the usual two-way powerhouses in the mix as well. Refurio comes in at number two. Ganado right behind them at number three. Shiner in class two-way division two comes in at number 10 in the state. UIL realignment has thrown a curveball for the Victoria teams in terms of travel this season. Sports reporter Ray Robinson caught up with a member of the UIL regarding the changes. We try to keep our same ISDs grouped together as we can if they do fall in the same um, classification system. And uh, we try to control for travel as best we can. Um, it's not a perfect process by any means. We empathize with our schools. You know, schools like the two Victoria schools, the troubles that they have, uh, that's not only travel for those kids and reduction in class time, that's also a travel for the community as well. It is important to note these alignment changes only last for two years. With your 25 Sports Now, I'm Zach Brown. We want to invite you all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. Two weeks until Election Day and more than 15 million people have already voted. One survey finds 47% of the early votes have been cast by Democrats, 33% by Republicans. With two weeks to go until Election Day, new polling from the Washington Post shows a tight race in every battleground state. Vice President Kamala Harris with the edge in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin. Former President Trump in Arizona and North Carolina. Each state is within the margin of error. Christians will not be safe with Kamala Harris as president of the United States. Trump rallying with faith leaders in North Carolina last night, claiming without evidence the Justice Department labels Catholics as potential domestic terrorists. If you're Catholic, there is no way you can be voting for these people. Trump surveying the hurricane damage in that state. FEMA has done a very poor job. Repeating Our false FEMA claims about FEMA spending money on migrants. It's just un true. It continues to be falsehoods and lies, um, and it is impacting the people and their perception of what they can get. Harris yesterday with three stops in three battleground states. Do we want a president of the United States who spends full time plotting revenge while they sit in the Oval Office? 
or a president who is actually focused on the American people. Harris in Michigan campaigning alongside a, former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who made this pitch to conservative voters. So For anybody who is a Republican who is thinking that, you know, they might vote for Donald Trump because of national security policy, I ask you, please, please study his national security policy. Not only is it not Republican, it's dangerous. Today, Harris, with no campaign event scheduled, Trump has a roundtable with Latino leaders in Florida, then a rally in North Carolina. Perry Russom, ABC News, Washington. Bloomington residents are addressing a number of concerns within their community. Meetings planned for this week should help answer some of their questions. Topics will include the plan to build an overpass on Highway 185 at the railroad track, along with questions regarding the move to incorporate and voter legality. Members of Bloomington Stronger Together say concerns about transparency of the community's water board also needs to be addressed. Meetings are not publicized as they are supposed to be. They're not circulated within the community, sometimes on the door or the window of the water department, but they're not regularly scheduled. They're not held at the local BFW hall, and community members are not welcome there. TechStop will share details on the overpass project today at 4.30 at Bloomington Elementary School. And then a community forum will start at 6.45 to discuss other issues in the community. Victoria County Commissioner Precinct 1 Danny Garcia and Precinct 1 Commissioner Candidate Kenneth Wells and Texas House Representative for District 30 Candidate Stephanie Basham are scheduled to attend the forum. The time is just about 648 on our Tuesday morning. Still to come, the President's Chief Foreign Affairs Advisor is in the Middle East. We learn why. All right, it's time to celebrate some birthdays. Happy birthday to Violet. Happy 11th birthday, Baba Ganoush. Mom and dad love you so much. Oh, happy birthday, Violet. That's such a pretty name, too. And also, happy birthday to Wyatt. He's turning 34 today. Happy birthday, Wyatt. Happy birthday to Bill. Hope you have a great day. Love from your family. Happy birthday, Bill. And also, happy birthday to Jeff Goldblum. The iconic actor is turning 72 today. Happy birthday, Mr. Jeff. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 News Now Sunrise, come to CrossroadsToday.com, click the drop-down menu, then click the Home tab, and then you'll see Submit Your Birthday Photo. Okay, the time is now 6.48 on our Tuesday morning. Sorry, I was thinking about those. Oh, yeah. uh, Jeff Goldblum. Um, oh, were you? He's just a funny guy. Movies. <laughs> All right, well, happy birthday if you're celebrating one today. That's right, happy birthday. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Join 25 News Now, the Victoria Advocate, and the Victoria Chamber of Commerce for a political forum with the candidates for State Representative District 30, Wednesday, October 23rd, 5.30 p.m., UHV Walker Auditorium. Hear from Democrat Stephanie Bassam and Republican A.J. Lauterbach as they buy for your vote. Well, good morning, Crossroads. We do have a couple tropical systems that we're actively tracking out there, but we do have another system that might iffy, might become iffy as we go all the way into late next week and then the week after that to start out the month of November. But we'll look at that here in just a second, because starting out with the two tropical systems that are out there right now, we've got Tropical Storm Christy. That's a Pacific Storm. That's got a Pacific name as well. That's the K name. And then we also got Tropical Storm Oscar out here in the Atlantic. Just came off the coast of Cuba recently. But starting out, and actually we turn everything off so you can look at everything before we start looking at them a little bit more closer. Looking at Christy, first of all, get notice that it's very healthy looking with a gigantic uh a pretty big outer band that's uh, surging way out ahead of that. That's kind of actually going to make it strengthen a little bit more. And actually, we're also looking at uh, Oscar. You can see it looks like it's starting to kind of de decrease in terms of severity. It's kind of starting to dissipate as it goes out there into the middle of uh, the landing. We're going to look at that. You can just show that just in, in just one second. But starting out with Chrissy, you're going to see that actually this kind of proves that as we go into late this week into this weekend, Hurricane Center is expecting a major hurricane category three or greater as we go into this weekend. Winds right now are sustained at 50, just a tropical storm. But looking at Oscar, you can see as we 
will go into this week and later this week and actually the next 48 hours you can see it's going to decrease down to a tropical depression and then it's going to fully die off as we go on to this weekend as a tropical uh, just no longer a tropical system but right now winds are at 40 miles an hour and you can see all the warnings that are still in effect and the gigantic u-turn made as it made and uh, made impact with those higher terrain areas but we do still have one more tropical wave way out there in the deep atlantic and peters are still suggesting it's going to ride all the way into the caribbean as we all the way into late next week and into the first week of october we're going to have more details on that later next week and more coming up later on sunrise Secretary of State Antony Blinken is visiting areas of the Middle East this week. Today he's in Israel. The State Department says Blinken hopes the deaths of Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar will prompt Israel and Hamas to negotiate. Many analysts seem skeptical Blinken will secure a deal. They say it could be difficult for Hamas to negotiate during a transition and there's no guarantee a new leader would want peace. Blinken also wants to convince Israel to find a diplomatic solution with Hezbollah in Lebanon. Judges in Michigan and North Carolina rejected lawsuits Monday brought by the National by, brought by the Republican National Committee and others. Two separate lawsuits challenged overseas ballots cast by voters abroad who never resided in the states. The North Carolina judge said Republicans presented no substantial evidence of the fraud they claimed they were trying to prevent. The Michigan judge called the lawsuit an attempt to disenfranchise voters. Still to come on Sunrise, news to know before you go. We learn which celebrities were honored in a private ceremony at the White House. On Monday, President Biden awarded 20 National Medals of the Arts to recipients in a private ceremony at the White House. Among the recipients present were Steven Spielberg, LeVar Burton, Spike Lee, Missy Elliott, Queen Latifah, Idina Menzel, John Meacham, Aaron Sorkin, and Bruce Cohen. The Arts Medal is the highest award given to artists, arts patrons, and groups by the United States government and honors exemplary individuals and organizations that have advanced arts in America. The Powerball jackpot was worth an estimated $456 million Monday night, with no one winning the top prize Saturday. Monday's Powerball numbers are 1, 25, 57, 62, 64, and the Powerball is 15. If someone wins this jackpot, it will be worth around $220 million after taxes. Hurricane Oscar made landfall in Cuba, bringing heavy rains, winds, and storm surge to the, to the island nation's east coast. Before the storm hit, Cuba had already been dealing with its worst blackouts in years. And now the impact of Oscar is further complicating efforts to get the power back on. Cuba had restored power to 160,000 clients in Havana just prior to the grid's collapse on Sunday, giving some residents a glimmer of hope. Railroad Commission Chair Christy Craddock is touting that success in her campaign, saying Texas is and should remain a national leader in energy policy, but her Democratic challenger has called the regulation too lax. You can read this story by the Texas Tribune on our website, crossroadstoday.com. And we want to invite y'all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. And now we have time for a look at our kind of a spooky sunrise with first horn storm team meteorologist Parker Cox. Parker. Yeah, it is kind of a little bit of kind of spooky sunrise out there this morning. We've got a little bit of partly cloudy skies kind of hovering, hovering over us this morning. Make it look a little spooky and also kind of a little dark out there because that sun's not coming up yet. But in the next couple of weeks when daylight savings hits, it's going to be real nice and sunny around like 6, 630 in the morning. But right now, if you're tuning in with us, it's a little bit nice out there. It's a little bit, definitely a little bit humid out there. 66 degrees in Portland, Baca. I do put one degree off, though, bringing humidity to 96 percent. That's still plenty humid out there. And it's actually enough to see a little bit of fog. But I'm not really thinking any thick fog out there along the coast. If you do see any thick fog, it might be a little bit more in the inland county. So just be careful of that on the roads this morning. Fog should be clearing up between 8 to 9 a.m. as the sun comes up in the sky. But the sun's not exactly to come straight up in the sky today because we're going to have some partly cloudy skies. As you can see here, coming out of southwest and southern Texas today. And that's going to bring us all in the upper 80s and low 90s again today. And not just us, but look at the rest of the beautiful the state today. Got lots of upper 80s and low 90s, and Texas is doing what it usually does best. It likes to warm up here in the middle of the fall. But right now, going into overnight, lows can be dropping back.
back down to the low 60s. But look a little closer to home today. I'm thinking I have about 85 in Portland Vaca today. Partly cloudy skies all day long. A little warmer in Victoria. I'm thinking 89 today. Maybe some clouds starting to decrease in the late afternoon and about the same time for the clouds today in Quero, but a little bit warmer, 89 or maybe even 90 for a moment or so. But we've got lots more warm weather to go all the way into next week with no rain or cold fronts in sight. All right. Thank you, Parker, and thank you for joining us. Be sure to follow us on our YouTube channel and tune in tonight for Shauna, Don, Mac, and Max. And be sure to pick up the Victoria Advocate. The Ask Madison column is right here, so be sure to pick up the paper. Have a great day.